Perfect. Well, I would like to start obviously by saying, uh, yeah, I'm very happy to receive this prize. It was already mentioned, but the thesis uh, from everyone this year, it was a huge range of topics. And I think the, the standard of all of these theses in general uh, was, was very high. So uh, I was very happy to be among them. And uh, yeah, I thank the, the jury for putting their uh, confidence in, in my thesis as well. Um, so I'm, I'm very happy to, to give a, a short summary of some of the, the main points in my thesis. Uh, it was titled, The Trip to Remember Assessing Including walking stability in older adults. And so, as you can guess by the title, the, the main focus or the goal of the thesis is based around falls among older adults. Um, and you can see here a, a hip fracture occurring um, in, a, in a study in a long term care home. And hip fractures are, are among many of the, the health related issues uh, that come from falls. And you can see here that uh, it represents a very common cause of falls, which is uh, a trip or, or a slip that happens during walking. Um, and especially recently, there have been a number of worrying statistics, also within the Netherlands. Um, the, the deaths uh, occurring due to the consequences of falls have been uh, increasing recently, and this is normalised for inhabitants, so this isn't just due to the, the higher number of older people. Um, and also in, in 2018, uh, over 4,500 people have died uh, in the Netherlands due to the consequences of falls. Um, so this is a problem that's not going away and I think especially with the, you know, the COVID situation at the moment and with many people uh, restricting activity and movement, uh, I think uh, mobility issues like this will, will continue to be present. Um, the good news is that we know about many interventions that can reduce falls um, and exercise is one of the, the prominent ones. So uh, even um, standard exercise, strength, uh, balance and aerobic uh, exercise um, has a positive effect on falls, as is well established from various meta-analyses. And it's also known that the effectiveness can increase when either the duration of uh, this training is increased or when challenging balance tasks are used. And what's becoming apparent is also that uh, activities and exercises specific to developing stepping, um, either volitional reactive steps or balance recovery steps following perturbations, might be even more effective in uh, less intervention time. And this is probably due to the fact that it's very specific uh, to the types of situations that lead to falls, such as walking and tripping and slipping. So the, the general aim of um, studies with the thesis was to better understand how old age affects walking stability and adaptability. Uh, and briefly, when I say stability in the context of my thesis, we were looking at the relationship between the center of mass and the base of support. Uh, which we assessed using a margin of stability concept. And with adaptability, we refer to how people respond when they're exposed to the same balance disturbance uh, repeatedly. And we see if uh, improvements can be made. And also if uh, improvements are made in one situation, or in our case, uh, following perturbations to one leg, um, how these adaptations can be transferred and benefit performance in another task or when the disturbance is on another leg. So here you can see an example of uh, one of the perturbation protocols that we've used at our current in the strict. Um, you can see that it's a quite simple treadmill belt acceleration to the stance phase during walking. Uh, and this causes a, a forward uh, rotation of the center of mass and it simulates uh, the effects of a, a forward fall. And on the right, you can see the, the protocol that we've used to get at a few different aspects uh, of interest. So we had uh, 10 perturbations in our protocol. The first and the last perturbation perturbed the, the right leg, and the second to the ninth repeatedly perturbed the left leg with some time for washout in between. And what this protocol allowed us to look at was first by looking at the first perturbation to each leg, we can just examine walking stability in response to a novel uh, perturbation. By looking at changes during the repeated perturbations to the left leg, like we have an idea of adaptability to this task. And by comparing the first and final perturbation, we can assess whether transfer from the adaptations to the repeated perturbation leg uh, can be made to the other leg. So I'll just briefly go over some of the key results. Um, for walking stability, so if we look just at the initial perturbations, we see that in our studies, young adults needed approximately six recovery steps uh, in order to get back to their baseline walking stability, whereas older adults need at least eight steps. So this isn't surprising when we consider the increased falls risk with age, um, but this gives an idea of the magnitude of the difference. 
If we look at adaptability, so we're looking at the change from the beginning to the end of the HPT perturbations to the left leg, the young adults improve their recovery by about one step. So at the end of the protocol, they get back to baseline one step faster. Whereas older adults show a three step improvement. So they actually improve more uh, during the course of this, uh, this protocol. And this is how that's reflected in the results. So on, on the y-axis, you see the margin of stability. On the x-axis, uh, the baseline, and then the, the steps uh, pre and post perturbations. And we have the, the three perturbations of interest here, the first and uh, second, so the first to each leg, and then the ninth uh, in the adapted state. And so what you see on the left is very clear differences between the young and older adults. They will do that in red. Um, they take much more time to get uh, back to their baseline walking at the beginning. But by the end in perturbation nine, you see that the, uh, the, the uh, groups overlap uh, almost identical in response. So there's uh, a one step difference at that point, but you can see that the, the overall stepping behavior is now very similar between these groups. And you'll also notice that the baseline stability here was very similar at all times. And that was actually based on uh, using a method that we developed in the thesis, which the details I won't go into now, but if that's of interest, you can also uh, see that in the thesis. Uh, regarding the transfer, this was one of the more uh, interesting findings. Um, in young adults, we didn't see any clear differences between the right leg perturbations. Um, so no interlimb transfer of the adaptations. Whereas older adults were able to transfer their entire three-step improvement that we saw in the left leg perturbations to the right leg. Um, and this was uh, unexpected, uh, but interesting. And here, again, you can see the data. So on the left side, we have the data from the young adults, perturbation one and 10. And again, these overlap quite a lot, and there are no significant differences. And on the right side, you see the data from the older adults with the first perturbation in green, showing the same pattern we saw before, um, with the, the delayed response back to baseline. Uh, with the tenth perturbation then looking more similar to the, the pattern they both have the young adults show, and uh, reaching back to the baseline level of stability much sooner. So just a brief summary of, of these points. Um, Overall, we concluded that the ability to adapt walking following balance is preserved with aging. There don't seem to be any age-related deficits in the ability to improve uh, the reactive balance responses to these perturbations. And that's very promising for intervention, and it also explains some of the early results we see uh, in intervention using perturbations like that for, for false prevention. However, the extent of application following balance loss probably reflects a necessity rather than an ability. Um, it's been mentioned in the literature quite often that uh, adaptability is um, yeah, a good thing, but if measured like this, what we might actually be assessing is a need rather than ability. So it's, it's not, it wouldn't be correct to say that older adults were inherently more adaptable than young adults, just that due to their baseline differences at the beginning, they had more of a need to improve their responses. And then just to conclude, um, I would like to mention uh, some future steps for research. So one of the main challenges with these perturbations is they're very task specific and we need to learn more about how to transfer these benefits into daily life where of course we're not only experiencing very specific controlled perturbations but balance disturbances can come at us from all angles different velocities different surfaces and that's the, the missing link at the moment so we, we know how to generate very robust and quick adaptations to a specific task, but how to transfer that into daily life in both healthy and clinical populations is the main problem. Um, but research continues with this, and we are learning more about things like perturbation dose um, and how different uh, populations might respond to different uh, types of protocols. Um, but this needs to continue before we're likely to see um, a really meaningful impact that's also clinically feasible in these populations. So I hope that I gave a good uh, overview of a bit of a taste for the work that I've done in my thesis. Um, thank you very much for the attention. And of course, I would like to acknowledge uh, especially my supervisors, but all of the co-authors and collaborators who were involved. Uh, and again, you can read a lot more about them and their contributions to the thesis uh, acknowledgements. Uh, also the funding sources and the various companies that provided support for, for making the thesis. And of course, if you have any questions or interest, you can see my contact details here and the link for the dissertation is also provided. Thank you very much.